do you feel like your case was treated unfairly? And what were the major things that people were bringing up against you? Uh, I got accused of sexual assault. I got accused of knowingly having intercourse with a minor, which is not true because it was knowingly. I was on Tinder and I was tricked into it. And I think I was treated unfairly because all the allegations that came out in July, like I looked at on the same scope. They were treated as if they were all on the same level, even though some were more serious and some weren't. So that's what I... I think I was treated unfairly. So like everyone was looking at it as if it was the next Sky Williams, Zero, Nairo, Simpai. When you're on Tinder, it's like everyone's 18 plus on that app. So it's like, and if you ask the person, are you 18? And they say they're 18. No one's, no one's really going to ID someone, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think it was a really unfortunate situation that could happen to anyone who doesn't ID every single girl that they hook up with, you know? How did the mishandling of information contribute to the image of your overall brand? So I could say that my brand definitely took a big hit, but I honestly don't think it's something that I can't recover from. Uh, I lost my sponsor. I lost a lot of money, uh, a lot of connections in the esports industry, but there's so much more life to live. There's so much more avenues to explore into. And like, I'm not gonna let this like hold me down. You know, it's like, I know it was a mistake from five years ago and I'm not gonna let that define me. So I'll just keep on moving forward and just keep on rebuilding it. Because a majority of everything that happened, you were saying is uh, primarily from 2016 and like 2017, but there's a cutoff point uh, somewhere in there where you just decided I'm gonna, I'm just gonna stop doing this shit. Yeah, all the allegations were from 2017 and before, like uh, Evo 2017, sorry because I realized that after that event that I should just stop trying to hook up with the girls at events and just focus on my brand uh, competing. And that's pretty much it. I just stopped uh, trying to do that and I grew up. So I, I think I felt as if that's something that can't be taken away from me, you know? At any point, did you feel like an issue that could have been resolved in DMs was publicized just for the sake of it or? Yeah, because I even reached out to MVD because I know that he's roommates with one of the girls and this, uh, I made a story about me and I told him, I was like, uh, do you know if there's anyone that has a problem with me? And I know that that roommate. So I thought he would tell me like, Hey, you should DM this girl and like, let her know, like you guys have a, talk a conversation, you know? Mm -hmm. But he, he said, Oh no, I don't know anything. And then after a week later, she comes up with the screenshot saying that like, Oh look, he tried to cover his tracks. And I'm like, Oh, so I can't be a man in the DMS and like try to like work things out privately. It has to be in the, on the timeline. So I feel yeah. as if that was like pretty lame and if that's what they want to do, then I guess. But I already apologized to her, and uh, I guess I'm moving on from that situation, you know? Do you think for some of the women, anything was, like, that bad to where you couldn't just talk it out in DMs? Like, let's say as if they DM me, and I showed that I was like, I was like, no. Like, denying everything, and it was being, like, completely unreasonable. I feel as if that would be, like, a reason to, like, go public and be like, hey, like, look at this guy. He's not taking any accountability. But, like, nobody DM'd me in private and was like, hey, you made me feel uncomfortable at this uh, tournament. Like, let's talk about it. Like, I never got a single DM, like, trying to work things out in private. So I I'm noticed like, we were talking about Knives that posted the screenshot from you having a conversation with MVD since they were obviously rooming together. Do you agree with her assumption that you trying to hash things out in private was an admittance of guilt on your part? Yeah, so I feel as if it was definitely not, not an admittance of guilt because in the DM I said, I just wanted to know if there's anyone that I pissed off or wronged in the past that I'm not aware about. Mm -hmm. That's that's a blanket statement. Like, you know, it's not like saying, is there anyone that I assaulted in the past? And like, it's, no, it's not like that at all. So I just wanted to reach out to MBD and like try to work it out in private, but I guess they wanted it to be in public and just like have it be on, on the timeline, you know? So It seemed like how they were explaining it, that you were trying to kind of manipulate the situation and scare some people that might come out with stories uh, by reaching them before they reach the uh, the timeline. That's mostly uh, what I picked up. If they see it as that, then uh, I'm, I'm, I never threatened anyone before in my life on, in, on Smash, you know? So it's like, I don't know why they would read it as if like, I'm trying to like silence them before they come out, but I'm just trying to talk about it before it comes out, not be like, hey, if you do that, I'm going to sue you or something like that. You know, it's like, it's mm -hmm. not like that at all. So, okay. And we'll talk more about a suit later, but did you at any point attempt to get the suspected 18 year old intoxicated with the intent of getting sexually intimate that night? Uh, nope, because I went to the tournament and there was a party on, I believe Saturday at the tournament. And I went and I drank there with my friends with like, uh, my 21 plus friends. And she was my guest. So she came to the party as well. I didn't give her like liquor, liquor at the party. So, mm -hmm. I don't see as if I don't see why people are saying that, oh, you got her drunk. She didn't even say that she was drunk in her statement. So it's like people are just assuming that because they heard it from word of mouth. You think maybe that might have been due in part to uh, the other story about you force feeding another woman alcohol? Oh, I, yeah, I think they try to intertwine stories. Oh, he tried to force feed this girl alcohol, even though I did not try to force feed alcohol. And I guess they try to see they try to like 
paint the picture that I try to get every girl drunk and then try to like have sex, you know. But mm -hmm. this was not... basically a Bill Cosby scenario, one on one. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's a different situation than I did. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about the one later, the force feeding one, because I had I had alcohol, but I didn't try to force feed anyone, you know. It's mm -hmm. like I offered it. But... Okay. Was there any visible struggle from the woman who claims that you kind of force fed alcohol through a kiss? Because she was talking yeah. about how she was, like, moving her head away. So I'm asking, like, how is it possible that you made enough lip contact to actually pour alcohol in her mouth through a kiss? Yeah, so there wasn't a visible struggle, but, like, I'm not going to act, act as if I'm completely innocent in that situation because I definitely tried to kiss her, and I already apologized to her for that. Do you think it's fair that she characterized your concern for her as being more afraid than worried? I asked her, are you okay? And I don't think that are you okay was as if I was trying to protect my own self, you know? I was just asking in good faith, you know? I still apologize to the girl because if she's uncomfortable, I can't tell her how to feel. And, uh, yeah, was, let's move on from that, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. After she told you she wasn't interested in, like, pursuing any more relations that night, did you make any other advancements? Um, no, because in all these stories, you realize a the theme where once they show that they're not interested, I stop completely. Mm -hmm. There's no, there was no story that came out where they said, I said no, and then he kept on pursuing further. You even go girl, far as blocking them, matter of fact, when they yeah, don't I'll, show, I'll, like... I don't say that it was because of them denying me, but sometimes I block, unblock on Twitter just because I want, I don't want to follow you anymore, you know? Uh-huh. And I want you to follow me, so I block, unblock, and then they... So it's like a soft block scenario. Yeah, it's a soft block, but they leave, they leave out the soft on purpose, you know? They're like, he blocked me. But mm -hmm. it's mostly most soft blocks, you know? Once a girl says no, I just stop pursuing anything any further, you know? So it's like, that's a common theme in every story that goes, that goes on. It wasn't like, oh, I said no, and he kept on trying to, like, make advances on me. So I definitely mm -hmm. stopped after she was uncomfortable. Okay. So there was an instance of you supposedly kissing a woman on the Evo floor without consent. Uh, is this story true? And if so, what were the circumstances that led to that scenario even happening? So it wasn't like the Evo floor in the venue, you know? Okay, so it was at 3 a.m. at the bar of the whole, like the hotel lobby, I believe. It's mm -hmm. a casino lobby, so it was like 3 a.m. is like, like 12 o'clock bustling, you know? And we were all drinking and having fun and stuff, and then like... We were talking for a little bit, and I thought we had a vibe going on. And then uh, as we were walking to the elevators, I tried to lean for a kiss, and I guess she didn't like it. And then um, I stopped after that, and then she went to her room. And then I, four years later, two or longer. So it was like, mm -hmm. I in a moment, I didn't think anything of it because I didn't really see like a, like a, oh, my God, you tried to, you know? And if I did, I would apologize right there, right then and there. But she, like, said how, like, she seen me at events, and, like, she was afraid and stuff like that but i was like and she never said anything to you correct no never. about it was only until I, I realized seeing all that on twitter and then i was like oh i didn't know any of this you know okay so, yeah sorry i apologize to her as well in her in the dms but i think she didn't reply to that one or she didn't see it so uh yeah okay and i actually like how they, they try on the evil floor like like in, I, in the venue in broad daylight it was fucking at the bar at 3 a.m you know it's like Paint the picture better. It's like yeah, you were a little buzzed. You know, you thought yeah, you were hitting exactly. it off, and you might have came off strong, is what you're saying. But you yeah, would never exactly. know that because they didn't just come come up and tell you that straightforward. Yeah, exactly. Instead, you know, they so. waited like four years later to post it on uh, social media. Exactly. What primarily happened during the fallout of these allegations and the conversation that followed? Like, did you get any kind of harassment coming your way? Were people trying to deplatform you? What was the main issues that were in your life during this? Uh, time frame i actually caught a lot of death threats a lot of rapists child predator comments and uh someone even went as far as to like go on my facebook and i have my cousin like listed as one of my like, family members and like they messaged her like all the stories about me and stuff like that but like she understood and like the fact that someone went that far to do that i was like what the fuck you know it's like mm -hmm. keep shit in the sphere that it was like having it you know like don't try to like dig in my fucking private life and try to like make my family hate me you know so they didn't but, uh, only want you excommunicated from their gaming community they wanted you to kind of be shunned by your own family because of yeah this. they pretty much wanted to force me into suicide i feel like that but i'm too mentally like strong for that you know like imagine killing myself over like fucking smashers you know <laughs> <laughs> facts so, <pretty> much. <laughs> oh my God. So, so i i pretty much moved on from all that shit you know it's like but seeing some people who, like, I thought were, like, my good friends, like, talking shit, you know, it's like, I was like, oh. But, like, we never had a single argument or a single, like, bad thing happen between us. But, like, they seen 
in July happened, and it was just like, oh my god, I knew he was sus, you know, I, I knew that he was like a creep. I'm like, oh, you were my friend this whole time without having any grievances with me, you know? So, mm-hmm. I think it's all fake, and, uh, but I really don't give a fuck about those people, so it's like, you know? If anything, it shows you who your real friends are now that have uh, stuck with you here and uh, yeah. actually want to see you have some semblance of a life after all this shit happened. Exactly, is... because it was a lot of unfair stuff happening in the, during that, and uh, I'm more grateful for my people who, like, support me now than uh, the fake friends who I had when I was on top and, you know, like, on, like, like T1, Immortals, all my, like, when I had clout. Yeah, <laughs> so with, right essentially, now, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So now I'm trying to, like, rebuild on my clout and, like, try to, like, get my life back together, so... uh Let's keep moving forward from that. So the group chat is a very common point of scrutiny against you because after everything started coming out, people saw that you were saying, oh, you were in a support group with like Nairo and Zero who had also been outed at the time. What were the details of your discussions together and what are your personal opinions on them as it pertains to the surrounding drama during the time period? All right, so there was no group chat with those two. I misspoke in that video, uh, pretty much. I was saying that I was in group chats personally with my, my, my own friends. To keep myself sane during all that but like during that moment i messaged each of them privately to make sure that they're not suicidal you know because mm-hmm. not i feel as if being out of like that could push anyone to like the point of no return so i messaged each of them and uh i, I didn't approve of anyone's actions during that whole time you know like anyone who got accused of like being a pedophile or uh like messaging minors and stuff like that you know that's that, that of course it's just not cool but like a person still a person at the end of the day you know I don't, I don't I don't want anyone that like I knew to commit suicide so even if you d- do disagree like what we've seen with zero recently no one wishes that upon him besides the yeah. worst of the worst like the bottom feeders no one like wants him to like commit suicide that's not uh, that's not the yeah. end that shouldn't be the end goal for any of this it should be yeah. like becoming a better person and rehabilitation yeah go to therapy and get help you know and then like become mm-hmm. a the better person that you were even though his situation happened about like seven years ago, so he might be a better person already, you know? So like, mm-hmm. who knows, you know? but he knows and he has to show that. And like, hopefully he could just grow, uh, grow up and like, not not return to the Smash community, but like grow in other spheres of life, you know? So Because as you said, there's more to life than just all this Smash shit and yeah, worrying exactly. about yeah, your clout. Are you aware that even the slightest hint of defense for your case results in community-wide backlash? Uh, like what we saw with Mr. E. He tried to make a statement on your case to try and clear the air and make everyone think of this as more of a neutral, separate case from everything else that was coming out at the time. And he ended up losing his sponsorship for it. I feel as if happened to Mr. E was definitely unfair because uh, he didn't even like 100% like support me, you know? Like he was just like, yeah, he still didn't ID, which is wrong, you know? But... Let's look at the rest of the situation and like try to look at that like independently. But the people were like, no, that's not good enough, you know. So like, he wouldn't have gotten dropped if the Twitter backlash wasn't like that hard. Like if the, if the sponsor like seen his uh, statement and was like just looked at it without looking at Twitter comments, he would have still been on that team. But the fact that they they lambasted him and just like said, oh, you're an idiot you're defending a pedophile. You're are you probably a pedophile yourself, you know? It's like. That's so illogical and, like, just way too much, you know? He was just Mm -hmm. being logical and trying to, like, understand all sides of the situation. And he got dropped for that, which is, like, it sucks, but, like, I I feel bad for him. But um, hopefully hopefully now people are more open to, like, seeing situations, especially what happened to uh, Captain Zack and all that stuff, you know? Like, let's Mm -hmm. try to, like, look at stuff more objectively and, like, not blindly take one side. Let's look at the facts, you know? Because I remember people attacking me for saying that Captain Zack was a piece of shit uh, when I had read all this stuff, and I knew that Captain Zack was, like, a bad faith actor in all of this. But I make yeah. a video about it, and all of a sudden, everyone's like, yeah, fuck Captain Zack. Captain Zack's the uh, worst. And it's but like, the fact that, you know what it is, it wasn't popular at the time. Mm-hmm. But now it's popular, so everyone's just like, oh my god, yeah, Captain Zack, he's scum. But anyone with fucking eyes could see that he was scum back then, you know? It was like, mm-hmm. they can make it make sense. Just because it's not popular in the moment, like, doesn't mean that it changed overnight, you know? Mm-hmm. The case is still the same. The, yeah, like, exactly. the case did not change at all. Yeah. Look at like look at him blackmailing Ally, you know? Like, that alone shows that he was about his money and just, like, yeah. taking advantage of the status as a minor, you know? So I'm surprised that was even a question after literally blackmailing someone, but... <laughs> Hey, that, with, that's just me. You know, with, with screenshots. With screenshots, yes. <laughs> if you were to give yourself a valid criticism, 
at the end of all of this, what would be the major thing you would say about yourself? What would be the major critique? All right, let's say if I had a time machine, I could go back in time and like fix my mistakes. Um, I wouldn't have replied to the original allegations the way I did because like I felt as if that was just really abrasive and just like people that steered people away harder than ever. You know, like I was just really aggressive and like how I came off, which was pretty bad. And uh, if I went back even further, I would not try to like hook up with women at events ever. I was only focused on just like the game and like competing and stuff like that. You know. So I feel as if those are my like uh, criticisms I gave myself, and um, I definitely I definitely grew up from all this, you know. But I still have more growing up to do, and I hope in the future I can show it off like in other aspects of life, you know. Would you say that you were somewhat of a fuck boy? <laughs> I I should say I, I was pretty much I was a player, you know. Was like I was just trying to like kiss girls, you know. It was like, but once a girl says that she's uncomfortable, it shows it. I don't try to go any further you know it's like i'm a i'm a fuckboy with boundaries you know <laughs> yeah and you can and you can see that reflected in a lot of their stories not a lot of people can deny that uh aspect exactly so given the opportunity would you ever try to make like a return to the smash community like how I, what naira did i will 100 percent never step foot inside a smash venue ever again i will play the game on stream because okay. like why not i fucking bought the game it's like it's my shit so i'll play it on stream but like in terms of like going back to what i was and like competing in tournaments and flying out everywhere and stuff like that i'm never doing that again and uh pretty much just due to like how i was treated and then plus i want to grow up now i was like i'm fucking 27 <laughs> i'm old as hell now so i want to just like grow and like evolve in other like ways you know so i think a lot of people can sort of relate to that sentiment of being treated like shit and then people just got <laughs> what the fuck Oh my! That turtle? <laughs> That's my new roommate. Are you thinking of taking any of this to court in the future, like a libel case, defamation, anything like that? Um, I was thinking about taking it to court 100% during the moment, but uh, I can't even find a girl's name. You know, it's like <laughs> I messaged Tinder. I I try to like get like the conversation that we had on Tinder, but the statute of limitations ran out, expired in 2019, and she came out in 2020. So I can't even take it to court anymore. But I could try for defamation. But I would still need the girl's name. I can't find it anywhere. You know, I, I looked on a Florida database and like they just couldn't find it. And, I checked uh, her social medias and all of them have pretty much been wiped. You can't really find a trace of her at all. And I tried hard. I tried really hard yeah, to try and find her. Yeah, um, I, I, you, you can't even if, even if you do find her, you can't find her name anywhere. So it's like, what can you do with like a, a Twitter at name? So it's just rough to like even try to attempt to take it to court. But I, I pretty much got I dealt with all that. But I don't think i have a court case for anything now so uh moving forward though if, if this ever happens again i'm definitely not replying on twitter and i'm only going to work, work on it behind the scenes and just like try to like take legal action but if people yeah. try to pursue this further after having the knowledge that they have now would you consider taking up a case against them if this affects you financially in any way yeah because i lost a lot of a lot of fucking money I feel as if now I'm just fucking fed up and I want to, if someone messes that money again, let's say if I go back up and like I make a name for myself again and it happens again where someone tries to bring me back down, I'm 100% taking the court and like I'm suing because I'm tired of that shit. I just want to like be, be happy again. Like I'm happy, but like happier, like mm -hmm. be financially set. You know? Yeah, so. because you were with a tier one organization. Like that's not just that's not just you know uh, like yeah. pocket change. That's a lot of money that I was getting from the contract of that salary, and it was a lot of money I'm getting from my Twitch streams and private deals that I had. Where I was like working with uh colleges and stuff like that. Going brand to deals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exact brand deals. So I lost all that pretty much. And, and I, it was I, almost instantaneous uh, from what yeah, I saw. Before I even had a chance to come out and like have a proper defense, I got dropped. So it was like. The allegation just ruins, even if it's, the allegation is false, you know, it's like it's ruined your whole income. So mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty whack how that happens. So you were kind of forced in a situation where you've already lost all this money, and now you're not only forced to kind of respond before shit gets out of hand with how things are being mishandled with case after case being levied against you. Um, it's also just kind of frustrating and stressful in your personal life. I feel that, that that's a big reason to why I replied the way I did, because let's say if you had a we're making like what over like six figures a year and then out of nowhere you wake up one morning and then you lose it all you know mm -hmm. it's like anyone in that moment will reply in the most vile way that they possibly can but even then like i still had some logic behind it but uh that's the big reason to why i replied the way i did in july but like moving forward i realized that it was the wrong way but like i still understand like why i replied that way so 
Yeah, I I wouldn't hold it against you for being angry, but it definitely could have been handled a lot uh, better and more friendly manner, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. In 2020, she came out and she was like, uh, even though I knew what I was doing, I purposely lied about my age in order to hang out with these people. And then she said, I wasn't raped or groomed, you know, like those are things that she said. So, mm -hmm. like, make it make sense. I she said she was eight. She's maintained that she was 18 the whole entire time. And like five people are saying, oh, no, like. She told you she was a minor. No. Where? You know, it's like... She yeah, was in, in her own story, in her own account, yeah. she says she's comfortable with lying and then said that she even had sexual encounters with a ton of other players. Like, yeah. you don't just do that on accident. That's uh -huh. not just, like, overnight. I don't know about those stories with other players, but I just know about what happened to myself, and then I think as if it's unfair to call me a child predator. I'm on Tinder, an 18-plus app. It's not like I went to like a school and was like, "Hey, you're 18," and she was like, "Oh yeah," you know. It's like it's Tinder. It's like mm -hmm. a hookup app for 18 plus p age people, you know. So a child predator will be at like a, a local like, playground and like trying to like hit hit on the like, kids or you know? or like a smash venue. Yeah, exactly. Or a smash venue, like <laughs> knowing <that> people. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I but got yeah, your I don't ass. Think child predator at all. So, and anyone with common sense knows that too, but. Yeah, early on, before this information came out that she was actually 16, a lot of people saw it as a 15-year-old that you actually yeah. had sexual intercourse with, which would be incredibly illegal, but in the state of Florida and uh, many other states, 16 is the age of consent, and there's not really a problem there. So yeah, I feel like as if she purposely put that she was 15 in order to make it illegal, mm -hmm. because there would be no defense for that, no defense. Even if she lied, it will still be in my fault. Like, it's weird like that, that she would lie about that when she had all the time frames and the time to post this on social media. Exactly. And she knows the event that it happened at. So I was like, why not put two and two together? You like, mm -hmm. I had to pick it up and, and realize that her birthday birth is on October and the event was in November. Mm -hmm. So I pointed that out and I was like, oh, she's actually 16. So she lied about that, you know, so. Yeah, because she was born in 2000. The event was smashed the record 2016. 26. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Oh. E quick maths. 16. Quick maths, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. On an app like Tinder, the assumption is that everyone is 18 plus. So do you think it's fair that people characterize you as a child predator, even though you said that you got textual confirmation that she was 18? Because not everyone's just going to card someone even after they say, yes, I'm 18 years old, because that's just, it's not really a social norm if you think about it. Yeah, so I don't think I'm a child predator at all, because as you said, no one's going to, card people that they just met it's tinder you know it's an 18 plus app 18 plus since like forever you know so mm -hmm. the fact that people are saying oh he's a he's a child predator he's a pedo where's the other people who are saying like i'm a minor and like try to hit on me or something like that you know it's like that was the only story about me with a minor and i got tricked into it so it's like where's the ongoing minors that like i've been in this fashion community for what 11 years they should be at least like 11 more minors for every year you know like something yeah. like that like it was only one situation that happened with a minor. It was a complete misunderstanding. Just like how Nairo was treated like a child rapist until everyone yeah. realized that he was actually the victim of the scenario and a pathological liar like Zach was behind the whole thing. So yeah. I, I don't see the, um, well, I do see the disconnect logically to say that anti being lied to, still a child predator, but Nairo being lied to, ah, he's a hero. Like It's also because Nairo's a love player and I always been a hated player for my whole career. So it's like, there's definitely a bias to it. And no one can deny that. People just randomly have threads against me talking mad shit and it gets like a thousand likes, you know? So it's like, mm -hmm. people just didn't like me. And they seen this as a reason to like come at me even harder and I got canceled for it, so. Yeah, you're kind of an antagonistic figure. And I can I can assure you that if anything comes out about me fucking like a 16 year old or something, it's gonna be like World War Three. Yeah, it'd be world news. So, <laughs> but that's not. <laughs> That's not going to happen anytime soon, so. Any last words for the people looking in on this case and your situation as a whole? Uh, any last words? I would say that please wait for both sides of a story before you make a judgment. Like, the fact that people were just so snapped to just jump on each side. The first bit longer that comes out, it's, it's like, all right, we're on this now. The second one, oh, all right, we're on this one now. It's like, no, just like get all the information first before you make a judgment and then just like try to look at the whole picture you know? and then uh don't be biased against someone because you don't like them like facts over feelings you know like look at what actually happened and form your opinion on that not because oh you know this guy's a dick you know so he he's probably guilty like that's not fair 
Like you guys, you guys would be fucking terrible jury duty people. <laughs> yeah, I, I've um, definitely noticed a lot of confirmation bias is what we call it. Is uh, yeah, you see something against someone you hate, and it's just, it's just yep. that's what you believe after that. It's that's easy. how he is, you know. So I feel like that's that's not right. And uh, moving forward, uh, I feel like as if a legal team should be involved in a lot of these cases, you know, like Simpai should not be walking freely if she did, truly did what she did, you know, she should be mm -hmm. behind bars 100%, you know, like puppy look like a baby. That, that shit was fucking foul. So like they should urge the victims to uh, talk to police and get legal situations figured out, you know, like a lot of people deserve to be locked up. And I truly feel as if, if Simpai did that, she should be locked up. So. I'm going to be uh, entirely candid. I think the only crime you're guilty of here is probably uh, something along the lines of underage drinking. I hope you've learned and, like, grown from this situation because, like, yeah. that kind of shit is, it just it causes nothing but trouble. Yeah, um, I definitely feel as if I learned and definitely grew from all that. Right now, I've just been talking to my close friends and just been chilling, working out, you know, like, life been going well. So I'm just going to keep on, keep my head up, keep going forward, and uh, have some stuff behind the scenes that we're working on, and then uh, hopefully I can show it to you guys soon. So... That's yeah. good. I'm glad to hear that, Anti. Well, thank you for sitting down and talking with me. I hope we can, you know, get all this out soon uh, to everyone watching. Uh, make sure I will actually upload a, a large portion of just Anti's interview so you guys can sit there and look at it um, in more of uh, its own confined space. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you, Anti. Appreciate it. Thank you, Technicals. Appreciate it. So, Mystery, what was uh, your initial thoughts on the Anti case? Because I know you had a couple things to say about it uh, after you saw everything that went down. My initial thoughts related to the incident with the young girl was honestly like, dang, how could Jason not ask for ID? Asking for ID, especially if you're somewhat suspicious of someone's age, is like a golden rule. If I was in that situation, I would have 100% asked for ID if I was suspicious of someone's age. So all in all, I was very disappointed with how Jason went about the situation. But after thinking about it some more, I also understand that despite how obvious something may seem to many people, to others, they really might not see it that way. Like I said earlier, asking for ID is common sense to many people, especially if you're suspicious of someone's age. But at the same time, I can also see the perspective of someone thinking that taking someone's word of mouth is enough to like take their word for it. And I actually found out like after like searching like on the topic, I found out that many people actually refuse to show IDs or ask for IDs because of it being like a safety or like an intrusion, you know, type, type thing. Yeah, sometimes Tinder is more like uh, you want to get a one night stand and it, what if you give them a fake name or that's not like your real profile. So like what really inspired you to make the twit longer? You just saw it and you felt like something needed to be said or like what was going on behind the scenes? Really often I would just see people throw around the P word you know, and throw around just stuff that I personally considered not justified for the situation regarding him. It was like a feeling of just seeing someone who was from my perspective, someone who was really, really not good enough in a certain area, them getting super, super mistreated rather than that treatment being saved for someone who really did have the intent on doing something malicious or who was careless. I don't think it's fair to say that Jason was careless because people who are careless, like, wouldn't ask, period, you know? Jason, on the other hand, he was suspicious, he was, mm -hmm. and he acted on that suspicion in a very, very poor way. Okay. So to me, it just wasn't right to see someone who really did not show an intent on, you know, doing a bad act or be careless you know, get a similar type of treatment as someone who... We did see that he asked for age, and she said that she was 18, so... Yeah, yes, and that's the thing, like, you know, an attempt was there, you know, or that's how I view it, you know, he did attempt, but, you know, very, it was very, very poor, and that's, like, kind of, like, the argument, you know, many people don't consider that an attempt because of how bad it was, type okay. shit. So that's kind of, like, how I look at it. He deserves to get, like, a ton of flack, for sure. Definitely a ton of flack, but, you know, not to the extent that was done. You're saying that the intent wasn't, like, malicious. Like, he's not he's not actively finding 16-year-olds. He got uh, kind of stuck in a situation where she happened to be 16, even though yeah. the attempt he made wasn't as thorough as some people might like in the situation. Yes, 100 percent. Yep, that's that's pretty much my take on it. Yep. Do you feel after you addressed all these things, like what we just talked about, that you might have been misrepresented in your point or your views to the point where, you know, it, it became a problem for you? Some people definitely, definitely uh, misrepresented me, which is why I'm never going to delete my post on the topic. So people can go back at any time and really analyze everything I said 
So it'll never be like a he said, she said thing. You know, my what I said is there and it is, it's going to stay there. But the thing is, I understand that like this topic, rightfully so, is a very, very sensitive topic. Some people might not read what I said at, at first with like the most clear judgment. You know, mm -hmm. despite that, that still doesn't give people the right to misrepresent me and what I was standing up for. And, you know, lots of them were very, very false ways. Some people said that oh, Mr. E is just blaming this girl for, you know, everything that happened. And that wasn't it at all. The only thing that I was trying to, you know, draw attention to was that I don't think that Jason's actions justify the treatment that he was receiving from everyone under the consideration that he is telling the truth about not knowing her age. I chose to believe that there is a chance he really did not know the girl's age prior to him engaging in those actions with her, even if his defense came off as poor. It came so. off very aggressive, and Anti himself would agree that the initial stance he took w was not the best, and uh, I don't blame too many people for not, you know, just immediately going with it because of how accusatory it seemed and how angry he was, yeah. but I definitely saw some people kind of representing you as, oh, you're supporting, like, child rape. You think it's okay to have sex with 15-year-olds, and that's Never. where things really started to get out of hand. And that kind of leads me to my next question. Uh, do you think it was fair that your sponsor dropped you because of this entire charade, like this entire situation? In all honesty, although it sucks and I wish it wasn't the case, I do understand from a business standpoint, any type of bad publicity is bad pu publicity. Okay. Like even if like some of that bad publicity goes hand in hand with support, you know, I realized that before I made the tweet longer and just said, yeah, this is something I want to do regardless. So you felt um, it was yeah. important enough to make a stand for? Definitely, 100%. You know, not because he was like a friend of mine, but, you know, he was someone that I deemed as mistreated, and I would do that for anyone. I think that's the really scary thing about this entire thing, because there's one side where you know it might be a little bit easier to get away with taking a stance on it. Like, as we've mm -hmm. seen before, a lot of people would, would be vocal taking stances on it if it's not like, uh, if it's not against the grain, but... It would, right. it's very um it's very out there i'd say i wouldn't necessarily say brave but it is out there to uh try and defend some of the people that did start going down in uh last summer of uh, 2020. i thought it was interesting how you took a stance there i didn't know too much about it but um i can respect the fact that you said something you believed in and you stood behind it you didn't delete it if you could go back knowing all that you know now and how everything went down would you change anything about how you uh went about this situation yeah in all honesty no you know, even if I received like a lot of flack for it, you know, I just, I do value the fact that, you know, I was real with how I felt at the time, despite, you know, just seeing how everyone else was kind of reacting to the, the whole thing. Being on the internet, it's, it's important to say how you feel about stuff, but comes with getting uh, some flack sometimes. And that's, that's just how it goes. <laughs> so I don't regret it. Chad, Giga Chad. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you can, uh, you understand that mentality. It, it keeps you headstrong. It keeps you headstrong in a, in a space that's so like up and down as the internet like one day you're going to be on top one day you're under you're under everything mm -hmm. um, you gotta just know yourself you know you gotta know how you are at the end of the day you can't care about you know what people say about you and stuff sometimes that's hard to do but you know it's if you want to be on the internet you should be uh aiming for that mentality i think <laughs> type shit <laughs> <laughs> i like those little laughs <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i like those little laughs I do that shit all the time it's just mad funny. All right, we're on the last one. Um, we're in. Are you aware that there was a... Ah, uh, fuck. Fuck. I do that sometimes. <laughs> I'll, no, like, good. trip over my tongue, and then I'll start saying, like, fuck a lot. <laughs> <clears throat> Hold on. Let me do a lip dab, too. She Word. You know, <laughs> I, you know I be crusty. It's not <laughs> I be, I be. I'm always crusty. It's crazy. Always be the realest niggas with the crusty slips. Word, yeah, I don't know what I don't know what it is. <laughs> Sometimes it's like the fans, like the fans drive me because I have two fans going, so I'll like turn off the the top one and then the bottom oh. one when I record. Yeah, because it fucks me up. Um, I feel that. All right, I'm gonna go into the next question. Are you aware yeah. that there was someone that was actually trying to defend you during all this who made who made his own thread, his own like quote retweet, and he ended up having to defend himself because he was uh, suffering from the, some similar misrepresentation and he made a little twit longer just to kind of, you know, distance himself from any of that uh, harassment that was going on. Make sure. <laughs> yo, that, that, damn, that response, yo. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the kind of responses he was getting, and I, I saw it all throughout yours. Um, it seemed like a lot of people were jumping to conclusions during this entire era. Like, that's gonna be, like, a common theme that we're 
going to be addressing throughout the uh, the rest of these investigations. But I'm really glad that you came on here to talk to me about this mystery. And uh, for what it's worth, I support you. I support you uh, sticking to your guns and not like changing up just because of all the pressure that might come with talking about these situations. Because it is really serious, and uh, I think it's important to consider both sides at all times. Hundred so. percent, man. Dude, thank you, thank you, man, for uh, you know hearing out you know my my slide and everything and uh, having me on. You know, thank you. I appreciate that. So awesome, man. Keep up the work you're doing, man.